This is Love Notes, daily devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Grace and peace to you. Our text today is Matthew, the first chapter, verses 2 through 6 and verse 16. Today we're going to begin a new series of devotions on women in Scripture, the faithful women of Scripture, and they are in the Bible. A critique of Scripture has often been that there aren't any women in it, and that's just not true. Now, I will grant that there are considerable gaps, and there are oftentimes very short little snippets that tell us about the women of Scripture, but they are nevertheless there. It is true that many of the writers of Scripture grew up in patriarchal societies where the role of the men was seen to be superior to women, but sometimes I think that's overplayed especially if we really read the stories with both the men and the women in them. There are strong and faithful and brave and fierce women throughout Scripture, and we need to pay attention to them. So why don't we? Well, we can blame the writers, and partly it's their fault, for sometimes giving us so little information about these women. But it's also on us as the readers because we tend to skip over the women, because even after thousands of years, we tend to be still a culture that doesn't take seriously the role of women in our lives, our world, and our faith. So these devotions will be an attempt to recover that a little bit, to help us see what we don't often see, to hear what we don't hear, and to break the habit of not noticing women in the Scripture. Our text today is a genealogy, and I know you're already thinking, if you've looked at the text, I don't ever read the genealogies, and I have to admit sometimes I'm right with you. All of those begats just kind of glaze my eyes over, and I'm not sure what they're for. It seems to be some kind of weird biblical record-keeping. But it's not the biblical county recorder's office when we encounter a genealogy in Scripture. Instead, it is a theological statement, a literary statement, that gives us a clue about the story the writer is telling. And that means we shouldn't just dismiss them. So Matthew begins his gospel with this genealogy. It says Abraham was the father of Isaac, or Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, etc., etc. But if you read closely this particular genealogy that Matthew gives us, he throws us some curveballs, four of them to be precise. Located in this genealogy are four women. That's not often the case. You see, ancient people believe that the way the biology of human life happened was that the male bore the whole of human potential for life, and the seed of humanity was deposited in a vessel for it to grow, and that was the role of women. There wasn't any idea about the biology of egg and sperm, and there I know I've done a little biological um, embarrassment, maybe. Uh, maybe you're blushing just a little bit. Know that when we talk about the men and women in Scripture to come, uh, we're going to have some times where we talk about the relationships between men and women, and that will lead us to sex and biology. Be warned. There's four women here that pop up in the genealogy, and because that's so strange, we should take note of it. We find in verse 2, Tamar. We find later, in verse 5, Rahab. We find later, in that same verse, Ruth. And we find in verse 6, the wife of Uriah. Uh, unnamed, her name is Bathsheba in the Old Testament. And she becomes the mother of Solomon, the heir to King David. David. 
These are all part of David's royal family, and they lead us right down to a couple who has gone to Bethlehem to be counted, whose name is Joseph and Mary. Joseph is of the house of David. We're talking about Joseph's aunties, if you will, as we think about these four women. Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, and Bathsheba are all Joseph's aunties, and so therefore, Jesus' aunties. It doesn't end there, however. These also set up the introduction of Mary. Mary, who is unwed at the time of Jesus' birth. Mary, who is the mother of Jesus, the Messiah of the world. That's what verse 16 tells us. What we should learn from this devotion, before we get into these particular women, is that you can't tell the story of God and God's people, as I said, without the women. It's impossible. You also can't tell the story of God and God's people, or Jesus, by not including some people who don't seem to belong there. And that's something that all the genealogies in Scripture seem to have in common. Uh, the writers often put in people who, when you know the players, don't seem to belong there. And that reminds us of God's grace and mercy and forbearance throughout the ages. God saves people who don't deserve to be saved. God includes people who we won't include. God gathers the people who we reject. And that is a clear message of this genealogy, for not only are all four of these women women, but they are foreigners. They are not Jews. They are resident aliens in the land. And they are not rejected. As a matter of fact, they are the aunties of Jesus. May we pray about the women in the scriptures and the women in our lives, so easily forgotten and glossed over, who have made the story of life in our life possible. Amen.